Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us here on the program where we cover the most interesting live trials and legal stories in the news today. We have a lot to cover, so I want to get started right now. Strong closing argument, but does the prosecution have a strong case? Let's break it down right now. Joining me is attorney Terry Austin here on set. Now, Terry, you've been following this case with me. You think they have a strong case? We heard what we've heard so far with the Snapchat messages. We've heard this, these tapes that she was recorded with, but she's not the actual shooter. They can't pinpoint her as the person who fired the weapon. Your thoughts? I think they have a very strong case, Jesse. You have a daughter telling the mother that she planned to kill her husband. I think even beyond the confession, which could be arguably coerced, or even beyond the Snapchat, when a mother and a daughter have a conversation, the jury has to believe that that is the truth. Well, the defense is saying there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of presumptions on the part of the prosecution. And maybe we'll have an opportunity to talk more about the defense later as the jury will, will begin their deliberations today. We are going to jump live right now because we are going to go live in Georgia to the Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum case. Again, these foster parents who are accused of abusing these two young, beautiful girls and ultimately resulting in the death of a two-year-old. Let's go live. Okay, we're learning about the condition when Layla was brought in, uh, and as the, this ER employee said, that she was cold, she was pale, she had these injuries, Terry, that she's never seen before. What do you make of that? I think the ER nurse is noticing the fact that this is not just a normal death of a child. She's noticing that there are all these other injuries. She's notifying, actually, the police. So she's got her guard up. And remember, the defense is saying that, wait a second, Layla choked on a piece of chicken, and any injuries you see are a result of resuscitation efforts. However, the medical examiner testified that this little girl had numerous injuries. She suffered from, she died from internal bleeding from a transected pancreas and that this is not a result of life-saving efforts. This is abuse. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be live. Welcome back to Law and Crime, everybody. A lot happening right now. We're live in two different courtrooms. So first, to let you know what's happening out in Michigan in the Kamaya Hassel trial, they are going through jury instructions. The judge is now instructing this jury on the law that they must follow when entering into their deliberations. A lot for them to consider. The question, of course, is did this woman plot the murder of her husband? Did she do it alongside her alleged lover, the person she was allegedly having an affair with, Jeremy Cuellar, they, they wanted to kill her husband in order to continue their affair and get some money from his account. That's the question. That's the thing that the jury's going to have to decide there. We'll let you know if we have an update out of that courtroom. We are waiting to jump back live in the Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum case. And I want to just break down with Terry what just happened. So we hear from this ER employee talking about a very sad sight when little Layla, two years old, is brought into the emergency room. She's unresponsive. Uh, there, the, any effort to save her is, is moot at this point. Um, and now we're talking about the injuries. But towards the end of her testimony, we hear where she was talking about what was the reaction from Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum. And she said that Joseph didn't show a lot of emotion. I remember Jennifer started rubbing her eyes, but there weren't any tears. The defense jumped back under cross-examination and said, well, wait a second. Uh, you know, maybe they were in a state of shock. Isn't that a possibility? We've seen that kind of questioning before, trying to observe the reactions of the defendants. What do you think about that, that line of questioning? I think that the defense attorney didn't really make a good point here. The ER nurse was very clear on the fact that the husband was leaning back and very relaxed and that the defendant herself, she wasn't crying and she just started asking questions. She didn't seem as though she cared very much about the death. So there was very little I think the defense attorney could do here and I don't think the cross examine accomplished much. Well look, you know, the prosecution saying that not only did they not care about these children, now they're wondering how to make sure they don't get in trouble. So we have an opportunity now to jump back live. Uh, new witness is on the stand. His name is Charles Evan. He's a Piedmont Henry uh, ER department physician. So again, we're probably going to get more of an understanding of what happened to Layla. Okay, as we listen to this, and this is really heartbreaking to hear what happened to this two-year-old girl uh, when she was 
brought into the ER. I want to take a step back and talk about the other, um, you know, we obviously see the defendants on trial, but also the Division of Family and Children's Services has been in trial on as well. Uh, yesterday was a really incredible day where we had the caseworker who was assigned to protect these girls testify and admit to some mistakes that were made. Uh, we heard that as a continuation of other testimony saying the same kind of thing. And I'm curious what you think about that, considering she, along with her supervisor, were both fired, and they both are named as defendants in a civil lawsuit. So the role, or the role that they didn't play in what happened, your thoughts? Well, from a legal perspective, the civil lawsuit should not really affect the criminal lawsuit. Mm -hmm. But it does seem that there will be some recovery in the civil lawsuit because the caseworkers actually admitted to not doing enough. So I do think the birth parents might be successful in that case. But is there a danger, and this is real quick, that the jury is going to base their decision on what to do with the Rosenbaums based upon what the Division of Family and Children's Services did, firing these two people and saying, well, clearly they thought there was abuse, clearly they thought they didn't do enough, is that inappropriate? Well, yes, because they're not supposed to be considering anything outside of the evidence that comes into this trial, although you have to admit it might have some influence. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, there's a lot to consider in this case, and we're keeping a very careful eye on what's happening in Hassel with the jury uh, delib the jury deliberating soon. Uh, again, jury instructions being read right now. So a lot to cover. We're going to take a break, and we'll jump back live. Stay tuned.